Well, good afternoon, or evening, I guess I should say. It's 6.40, according to my clock. My clock is a little slow, so it's probably more like 6.45. But, you know, it's not been too horrible of a day. It's not been a great day, but it's not been a horrible day. It's just been such a long week, and um, I am really looking forward to just taking the day off tomorrow. Just I'm not going to do anything that could even be accidentally productive that could even be like maybe a little bit productive I'm not gonna do it it's I'm just gonna chill out and and be a slug and grow antennas and lay on the couch that's that's what I'm gonna do because I need it I need it so bad man but I digress what I really wanted to discuss is VR and because I was in GameStop today and um, I was just, I was on a break, like we were super slow in the afternoon, so my boss just, sorry, I'm gonna try and adjust that, there we go. My boss just sent me on break, and you know, I just went up to GameStop, because there's a GameStop not too far from where I work. And um, I guess one of the GameStops somewhere, or maybe it was a Best Buy or something, because somebody was talking about like a, a VR demo, and, um, and and the clerk was kind of saying like, oh yeah, there's only one place in the city that can do it and it's this place and that, or that has one or whatever. And, and so, you know, and they don't have one right now, but they will next week or whatever. So VR, here's a really interesting thing because VR is one of those things, virtual reality, for those few who would hear the term and not know what it is, virtual reality. It was such a big thing in the 90s you know, like I remember um, there was this place in Salt Lake City called Cyberspace that you could go to. It was a VR place. My problem with VR is always my vision sucks, and um, there's no way, at least there wasn't at the time, for VR to compensate for that in any way. Um, you know, it couldn't, it couldn't accommodate the, my glasses, so I just had to, like, kind of, you know, do the best I could with it. But, you know, you'd go and you'd stand in this little, like, um, I don't know what to call it, like, not a cage, but, you know, just a little, um, like, booth, I guess. And they'd, you'd put gloves on that had motion sensors, and you'd put the helmet on, and, and you'd just play this game. And it was, it was really kind of fun, but it wasn't like... It was one of those things that clearly hadn't been perfected, you know what I mean? So, like, you played it and you went, oh, yeah, this this is really kind of cool, and this is clearly where video games are headed, but, but you know, like, right now, it's just kind of whatever. And I can't, you know, it was 20 bucks for 10 minutes or whatever, you know, I can't remember what, what they charged for this thing. But, um... But, yeah, it was just kind of this, this fun little thing you could go do. Um... And about that time, the first VR console, home console, came out, the Virtual Boy. And it was just this goofy little headset. It almost looked like a thing from Deep Space Nine or something. Like, you kind of put this headset on, and there's this little piece that's, like, over your eye right here. And I think it used liquid crystals. It was, like, red and black, and it had, you know, stereoscopic 3D effects. Um, and it was the last brainchild, if I recall, of a guy named Gumpai Yokoi was um, a video game designer in the 80s and 90s, a really prolific video game designer, and died in this kind of weird, tragic car accident. And the Virtual Boy was kind of a failure, and so he kind of died thinking of himself, I mean, to the degree that he, he died in a car accident rather suddenly, so it's not like he saw it coming, but I mean, he was at this low point in his career, like, where he was going, oh man, you know, like, I've totally screwed up. And, you know, they say that, like, yeah, the Virtual Boy itself is a failure, but... Um, the 3DS wouldn't exist if not for the Virtual Boy and stuff like that. Um, so it was a technology they were clearly to adapt in, in better ways later on. But the other thing um, about VR, I remember when the PS2 came out, when the PS2 and the GameCube were out, it was like, there's nowhere to go from here but VR. I mean, this was, oh God, easily 10 years ago now. Well, more than that more than that, right? I mean, early 2000s, and I'm like, yeah, there's nowhere to go from here but VR. There's nowhere to go. VR is the next thing. And I was really surprised when the PS3 came out, because it was like, it's just another console. Like, what, you know, how is it really that much better than the PS2? And I mean, I suppose it is in certain ways. Oh, look, a fire truck. 
There we go. I always hate that because you, you hear it and it's like, oh my god, where's it coming from? Anyway, um, so yeah, and you know, they've, they've just kept releasing consoles and it's kind of like, and, and I mean, consoles, you know, the obvious one being the Wii, have gotten really gimmicky. Um, I don't even own a PS4, just, and, and you know, I'll get one eventually, but, but I'm kind of like, until there's a game on it that I just can't live without, you know, like, why am I going to buy a console? It isn't like when the Super NES came out and it was like, Jesus Christ, I have to have one. I don't know what games are on it. Who cares? I have to have one. You know? <laughs> like, like, uh, and oh my God, when the PS1 came out, like, people don't, people who weren't around back then don't appreciate when the PS1 came out, the first time I saw the intro to Mega Man 8, I was like, I was, I, I think, like, my jaw dropped. I was just looking at that going, oh my God, that's incredible. And that's why I really thought, like, when the PS2 came along, and it was just infinitely better than the PS1 in every way, it's like there's nowhere to go but VR. There's just nowhere to go but virtual reality, and it didn't happen. And I honestly started to wonder if VR was dead, and then, you know, Oculus Rift and all this stuff kind of recently has started to come out. And, um, and I'm still kind of up in the air. It's like, where is VR going? It seems like there, there are some obvious logistical problems with the sensory deprivation that's going to occur with VR. I mean, you think about just the problem of like a guy walking down the street, dinking around on his cell phone, and he, you know, falls into a hole because he doesn't see that it's there, despite all the warning signs plastered everywhere on the big barrier, you know. So now we're talking about, okay, you're wearing this helmet over your eyes, and you've got, you know, speakers or earphones or something, so you're basically... It's immersive, that's the point of VR, it's completely immersive, and so you're you're moving around in real space, interacting with a video game that isn't real. And so there's some real you know problems where you've got to make sure the area around you is clear. I mean even they've had the problems with motion control of like people, you know, flinging the Wii remotes, you know, and stuff. Um, and so yeah, VR is going to get, you know, because you've got all the problems of motion control plus the problems of sensory deprivation. You know, you're essentially um, s deprived of, of, of any actual visual cues. And I think the, the place that could get very strange is, is if you're going you're gonna to be in a situation where, like, there's something happening in the game that there's no basis for in reality. You know, you're going to really have this this issue. You're going to be like, I think I saw, oh, what game was it? I can't remember. I think it was on one of the React series, like Elders React, and they're playing this game where, like, they're up on a rooftop, and they're trying to, like, balance up on this rooftop, and, you know, here are these people, like, they're just kind of sitting at a desk playing this thing, but because it's immersive, they're all like, whoa, you know, and it's making them dizzy, and they're like, oh, my God, and, and you know, there's, there's those kinds of things. Um... So that kind of total immersion is going to mess with people in ways that we're not... I, I don't think we can accurately predict yet. Um, so it's going to be a very weird thing. Um, and of course the, the debate... I'm sure the debate will be renewed about the psychology of it. You know, is it, is it more dangerous to play a game that's, that's all immersive... Um, Am I going to be more likely to act out, you know, violent fantasies or whatever? Um, so that'll be a thing. People will have some real concerns about that. And I guess some of the VR people have already said, like, you know, nobody under 18 should play it, period. Which, good luck with that, folks. I mean, come on. Pull your heads out of your asses. Anybody, <laughs> anybody ever watch that movie Brainstorm from about 1983? I don't know. But that, that was kind of a cool concept. That was... Um, you know, because they were just, I mean, in the 80s, they were kind of messing around with it. But the, the concept of this movie, Brainstorm, it's got Christopher Walken and Louise Fletcher and a couple other people, is that I can put on this headset, this VR headset, and record all of my experiences in real time onto a tape that a person can then relive that experience by putting on another headset and playing this tape back. They can relive my experiences as I experience them. And so there's some just kind of obvious weird things about like, you know, oh, you want to know what it's like to be a pizza delivery driver for a day. Okay, I can put this headset on and record my experiences and then 
you can buy the tape and play the tape back and, and experience, you know, all the, everything I felt, everything I saw, everything I heard and smelled. And, you know, then, of course, there's the obvious, like, sexual, you know, things you can do with it. And then, Louise Fletcher, who has a heart condition, is just kind of tinkering around in the lab, and she suddenly has a heart attack and realizes that she's going to die, but she decides she's going to do one last thing for science. So she records herself dying. And that's when things start to get just a little bit screwy. <laughs> um, but it's a very kind of interesting movie. It's been a long time since I've seen it. But um, the reason I bring it up is because, uh, you know, it was just science fiction. I mean, this was more than 30 years ago that this movie was made. And it's it was just science fiction at the time. But now, you're really going to have to... You're really going to have to think about this. I mean, people are really going to have to wonder about this. And... and Obviously, it's not possible to do what they're doing in the movie, but um, it's going to be weird having this immersive video game experience. And um, the implications of it are things I don't think we quite are or can be aware of yet. Um, and it will be interesting to see if, if it has a different effect on, on adults and on children than adults. Um, Certainly, the potential for for you know to do like horror games that are genuinely frightening in a in a much more realistic way, that's going to be a problem. Um, that because I know again like they've done some of that on Teens React. They have the kids play these horror games, and and you know it's like what a horrible thing. I mean, it's it's frightening enough to like turn all the lights off and play Silent Hill or something. Believe me, I should know because I've done it, and it's really kind of terrifying. <laughs> and then. You know, but to do this on an Oculus Rift or, or Sony VR or whatever it is, you know, that's totally immersive. I, I mean, it just, you're going to just wet your pants. I mean, you can't, and, and I, bet, I bet anything that comes up, I bet anything that happens to some poor soul will be playing this game, you know, scaring the hell out of themselves, and they'll piss themselves, and I, it's going to happen. It's going to happen. You watch. You wait and see. Um... But yeah, and I don't know what the release time frames for any of this stuff is. It'll be really interesting to find out. Um, and I don't know, that one of the biggest hurdles they're going to have to overcome is like guys like me with, with really, really poor vision. You know, is there a way that I can participate in VR with, you know, can it accommodate people with glasses? Is there a way that it can, that it can compensate for my uh, otherwise really shitty eyesight, I don't know. They're going to have to address all of this stuff, and it's going to be a really weird thing. And it's a fascinating thing, just on a sort of ending note, for somebody my age to have gone from like the 8-bit era, you know, like the first console I owned was an NES. Um, the first two games I had were, you know, the the, the game it came with was uh, Super Mario Brothers Duck Hunt. You know, so it was Super Mario Brothers and Duck Hunt on one cartridge. Two games on one cartridge, it was great. And um, the Legend of Zelda, the first Legend of Zelda. That was those were the two games I owned. And um, now we're talking about VR. It's really fascinating. Anyway, that's going to do it for me. You will not see me tomorrow because I'm off and I'm going to be lazy. So I will see you all on Monday.